Record type in C# -sharp provides a concise and expressive way to define immutable data structures. They automatically generate boilerplate code for value equality, deconstruction, and some common methods like get hash code to string equals etc. In this video, we will dive into record types, some of its features, and how you can use it when building your applications. Hello everyone, my name is Rahul and welcome back to this YouTube channel. If you're new here, I make videos on .NET cloud and devops so let's jump straight into learning more about record types for this video i will use linkpad which is a scratch pad for learning and writing dotnet code and for the records linkpad is not sponsoring this video i've just been using this for a long time and i love this application so let's start by defining a typical class that you would normally use when building applications so let's say we have a public class with the name person and we have two properties inside that so let's say there is a string name and also a int age property inside this now if you were to create a new instance of this person so let's create a new person so let's say person one is equal to new person and specify the name and the age now if we have exact same person so let's call this as person two and if we were to do person one equals equals person two and in linkpad you can dump the result out into the console by just using the method dump which i will use here so this is going to dump the result of this comparison so now if i run this you can see that this is going to be false this is because by default when you're using classes it uses reference comparison now if i was to compare two of the persons together then that's going to be true and if i have a var person 3 up here which is the same as person 1 and if we were to compare both of these, that is also going to be true. However, person one is not equal to person two. Let's see what record types give us. Now to start using record types, the easiest way to define a record type is to simply add the word record before the term class. So if I was to say record, and then this becomes a record type. Now with record types, we have a record class and also a record struct. In this video, we will cover the basics of record class. As soon as I name this as a record, now if I run this again, now you can see that this result is true. So you, the person one is equal to the person two. That's because it has the exact same property for the name and the age, which are both equal. Now, if one of them was different, so let's say this one is of 31 age, which means they're two different persons. And if I run this, you can see that this is getting a false. So it's basically comparing each properties in this particular record type and seeing if they are equal. If any of the properties are different, it's going to return a false on the equality. Now, we were very easily able to make this class person into a record type class let's add a new constructor to this person so that we can more easily create this instance so let's create a new constructor in here let's add the name string name and also let's take in the int age and let's assign those two parameters to the appropriate properties so now we have a new default constructor for person which means we need to pass them along when we create it so let's remove this name property and also let's remove this age so that we're just creating these two instances and let's copy this to create a new person too so now we are using the constructor to define the records now if i run this again this is still true because it's still a record type and both the values are exactly the same. Now, in the latest C -sharp version, you can define the default constructor when you're defining the class itself. These are commonly referred to as primary constructors. So let's make this as a primary constructor. So all we need to do is copy this from here and move this onto the class definition itself. So we are defining the primary constructor on the class type itself which means we don't have to have this constructor in here and we can very easily specify the name property in here. So let's specify the name and let's specify the age in the appropriate properties. Now we have the primary constructor and everything still behaves exactly the same. So if I was to run this, this still returns true. One of the key features of record types is immutability which means you cannot change the properties once the instance is created. However, that is not the case for all record types. Now, in this case, where I have explicitly defined these properties in here, for example, if I was to specify that the person1.age and specify 29 in here, 
that's still going to work because this property is right now marked as a get and also a set on the public. So now if I run this, this is going to say it is false. So the actual instance of the person one was mutated. Now we can easily fix this by making the set property as an init only property. So we'll, let's rename this and make this as init. So we can also replace the age and make this as init, which means you can only set it when you're initializing this class. And that's already happened in our constructor. And this here, the compiler says that init only properties can only be assigned in the initializer or on this or base of a constructor. So this means we can no longer mutate this object. So this two instances are still true. This brings us to the last way you can define record types. This is commonly referred to as positional syntax. Now the primary constructor parameters to a record are referred to as positional parameters. Using the positional syntax, you can define a record type by simply specifying the properties as part of your primary constructor that we defined. So all we need to do is specify the property names and that's it. We don't need to explicitly define those properties and assign those parameters. Now records using positional syntax are immutable by default. So let's see this in action. So all we need to do in this case is remove all this extra definition that we have done. So let me comment that out and let's put a semicolon at the end of this. So all we're doing is defining the person and specifying the properties. Now, since we need the properties to be capitalized, which is the general convention that's used when building .NET applications, let's make this as capital N and also capital A which means we have those properties available to us again. So let's run this. And here you can see that these two instances are true. Now, if I try to mutate person one, so let's remove the comment, it's still going to throw that error, which says the same error that we saw before for init only properties. So this means by using the positional syntax, it's automatically generating a age property, which is init only. But what if we want to change the person's age? So let's say they entered the age wrong and they wanted to fix that. Now, if you need to copy an instance with some modifications, you can use a with expression to achieve non-destructive mutation. A with expression makes a new record instance that is a copy of an existing record instance. So let's see this in action. So let's come back to our link pad and instead of specifically assigning the person one dot age, we can use the with expression. So let's specify this as var person one. So let's use the same person, but instead of assigning the dot age, we can specify with and specify the property that we need to mutate. Now, in this case, since person one is already defined, let's just assign this new person to person one. Now, if I run this again, this is again returned false because the person one's age is different. Now, if person two also changed their age, then these two persons are going to be the same. So let's say person two is equal to person two with age 29. And let's run this. And this is again true because both of them have exact values for their properties. Now using with, you can also change multiple properties. So if we need to change the name as well, why we were changing the age, all we need to specify is the comma separated and specify the name. So in this case, I can give my full name here. And these two instances are now no longer equal. But using the with, we can modify zero or more properties of this record type. So you can also give no properties inside here, which means it just creates a new copy of this record type. Now this is the exact same person as person two is and with all the same properties. Record types also override the built-in formatting for display, which is the two string method. It automatically generates code just like the properties to override the two string of a record type. Now, in this case, it uses the record type name as the start, and it starts with a brace and uses the, each of the property values inside that. So you can clearly see what the record type's complete value is when you're debugging or writing these using toString. So let's see this in action. So if I switch back and put a breakpoint in here, and let's run this. Now this hits the breakpoint and you can see in the watch window, we have person one and person two being displayed. And the value is overridden in just the format that we saw. So we have the record type name, which is person, and it has each of these properties written here in a comma separated value list. So you can see name is equal to Rahul Nath and the age, and similarly for person two as well. This is quite useful when you're debugging applications or even writing the two string into a console output. 
Just like the two string override, record types also automatically has a deconstruct method generated. So if you need to deconstruct a record type as a .NET tuple, you can do that as well. Now in this case, we just need to exactly match the format in which the constructor is created and we can get the properties back. So let's create a new tuple type. So let's say var name. And if I'm not interested in the tuple type, I can discard that. And let's now simply assign person one in here. Now, in this case, this is going to assign the name of that person one into this variable. Now, if I was to do a name dot dump alone, so in this case, this dumps the property name, which is Rahul Nath. So I was able to easily deconstruct the value out of this record type and just get the name property. So even this deconstruct method is automatically generated on the record type. Similarly, you can get any of the properties. So if we want both these names so let's say where name one comma age you can get that as well so in this case this is going to be for person two and we deconstruct both these values inside here now you can dump out these values or use this in your application code as required so for record types the compiler automatically generates code for us that's what makes it possible to define a record type in such a concise manner now we have an overridden object dot equals we also have a virtual equals method, an override of the get hash code, and methods for equals and not equals operator. Record types also implement the i equitable of t. So let's see this compiler generated code and see this for our person class. So if I switch back to Linkpad and go into the query window and let's use the reflect query in IL spy. This is going to open up this particular query and do the reflection on that using IL spy. So here we have IL spy open and here you can see this particular link pad query that I have been using. So if I go into the person type, you can see the automatically generated code. Now you can choose the different versions in here to switch between how it would look for each of these versions. So if I was to switch to C sharp nine, it's simply going to show that this is a record type. Now in C sharp eight, you can see the automatically compiler generated code, which is getting marked in here. So you can see we have the name and the age which are get an init only properties and we also have the constructor in here automatically generated the two string which is getting compiler generated the not equals and equal to get a hash code equals and all these methods are getting compiler generated let's expand the equals method and here you can see this is calling the equals method in here which further implements this method so inside this method all this is doing is checks if they are two references of each other or it compares each of these properties with each other so you can see it compares the name with the other name and similarly the age with the other age but all this is doing is using the equality comparer and using that to compare these properties so that brings the question, what happens if you use a property type that does not implement an equality comparer? Now, until now, all we use are default types like string and int. But what happens if we use a list type? So let's switch back and see that in action. So let's come back to our class. Let's add a new property in here. So let's call this as list of addresses. So let's say list of string and let's take in a list which are addresses. Now, in this case, if I was to pass a new list inside the constructor, so let's simply say new list of strings and let's pass one and two as the addresses. Let's create a copy of that and make that person two. So we have two persons again, and now it also has a list of strings. Now the deconstruct has immediately thrown an error because there is one more property that is required, which is the address. So let's discard that for now. Now, in this case, if I was to run this comparison and just run the person one equals person two, you can see that is returning false. This is because this is doing an equality compare on this list. So if I open the IL spy again and navigate to the person class, and let's go into the equals method to see the implementation. So here you can see this has added one more equality comparer on the list. However, by default on list of string, they're two equal only if they point to the same instance. So if I was to make the same instance for this list outside and pass them in, then this would be true. Most of the times when we build applications, that is not the case. So this is something you have to keep in mind when building record types. If you're relying on the value equality, make sure that the properties that you use 
also has the equality comparer implemented. So in this case, clearly I'll not be able to use a list and I'll have to use some other data type that implements the equality comparer. Now that's a topic for a separate video. And if you're interested to learn about that, let me know in the comments below. Record types are great when you want to define immutable value-based equality types. If you're familiar with the term value objects that's commonly used in domain-driven design, record types are a great candidate to implement that. However, keep in mind the limitation that it has that we just now saw with the list types. I hope this helps you to understand about record types in C Sharp, how to define them and how to use them when building your applications. If you like this video, please make sure to hit that like button. If you want to be notified of future such videos, please smash that subscribe button. It will also help me to grow this YouTube channel. Thank you and see you soon in the next video.